been the seeding here at the tournament, it feels like they should just be functioning a little bit better. But maybe that will happen over time. Maybe they'll play their way into this whole thing. Right now, we're going to be on Inferno with MIBR on the CT side, G2 on the T side. And we're seeing at least a P250 picked up there. I'm got, I've got three smokes and two Molotovs. That is a lot of utility, Jason, for a pistol round. It sure is. And two pistols on the other side of that wall. The duallys! Oh, I'm excited right. to be able to experience this these situations with you again. I know. I feel like the duallys specifically in this spot literally never work. All right. Well, he's going to have a chance to prove us wrong right now. Nico, <laughs> again, he's doing that so much these days. Like that slow creeping. He did it on, on Mirage as well with the AK. That cr sort of almost crouch, just walking around. I, I, I get much more upset at that kind of thing. If I'm the on the receiving end, yeah. and I do some some wild flick that someone does, okay, I just feel like it's so much more frustrating. You're like, he was so slow. Why why couldn't I shoot him? Well, there's the smokes looking for any counter utility that does not come. Double, double Molotovs into the back corners. Nobody's there. Uh, G2 is going to get a plant here and likely around. Everything falls on this retake from Banana. Three players here. Amanek hiding behind the, the car. And he's got Hunter to distract as well. It's all on this. There goes Hunter. Amanek steps up to the plate next and he falls as well. Oh no, they set it up nicely, but there's definitely time for a retake here. There's a kit as well on chest. They gotta be really careful, even if they have a quick bomb plant. And the rest of them have to run in. Nice shot from Breno all the way back here. Double setup in dark. Nexa, he's gonna get one kill. They're already tapping the bomb. Yellow's there, but they know where Jax is, and they're gonna be able to win the fight. Aim for it. They had to walk all the way across the map, but it's M. They need to hold on to it, which is um, sometimes a bit of an issue. Two AKs and a Galil picked up on the side of G2 because of the bomb. Yeah, sometimes more difficult, in fact. <laughs> we'll see. Nico with one of those AK-47s, obviously. Hunter with the other one, gonna flash himself through that smoke, and there's a gap of safety between the two smokes as MIBR with investment into their rifles aren't able to pick up enough utility to sustain any kind of a battle for Banana. I'm gonna back away early into the site. A minute and 20 left on the clock, and just a stalemate. G2 happy and content with this light amount of map control they've been able to get over towards Banana. And it's two SMGs at this bomb site. So as long as Knack as long as they're not showing any long-range fights and not peeking into the AK-47s, they can make those SMGs do work on the entrance, but they don't want to get into any duels before G2 commits. Yeah, you really want to catch them you know, as close as possible and preferably with some sort of angle you can fall back. Any extended fight versus a Galil or an AK probably not going to be favoring you. And I think that second smoke is what G2 is looking for. Now they have the timing on when yep. that smoke fades, so they know exactly when to deploy their own utility and actually attack this bomb site. All five players to attack B into these double SMGs. And not even a flash. That they can't even really, you know, get a kill, fall back, flash, and go for it again. They're just going to have to rely on the SMGs. One of them already smoked out. That leaves Breno on his own, and he is going to be dropped by Nexa. Very tricky to play this one. Nack actually comes charging through. He's just spread. It's just like, you know, little tiny sort of popcorn shells that are just uh, hitting them from the from the distance. It, it looked like it was going to be brutal, but it did almost no damage. It was like the claw from GoldenEye. It just never works. <laughs> Jax is going to just chill, and I, I think MIBR has got to give up on this one. They do have one yeah. kid on exit. No utility, though. That's tough. Even with two SMGs here, when one player peeks from CT spawn and then he gets smoked off, you actually only have one SMG to actually defend the bomb site, and that's not going to do enough for you, especially considering Molotov beneath him means he couldn't drop off the box in any way. He was just stuck fighting to the death, and that came quick. So one-to-one, one, G2 return the favor and take the second round. Neither of these teams, off winning their pistol, have been able to sustain the second round. Yeah, they're having a hard time with that. Now, if you are if you have the last smoke on the B-bomb side... I practiced it for so long, and I forgot it between the maps. Should have given it one more. I think just his inexperience as an academy player, I think he got a little bit nervous and burned that smoke a little bit early. You can wait for the indication, but obviously you're risking the walk-in contact play from the rifles. But I yes. think you'd almost prefer that, you know, with the double SMG setup. I think they're kind of double naded down to the bottom. Did they not really not hit anyone? They did do the double nade. I can't believe that didn't connect. Be Ere Enison. There we go. I got it that time. I, I'm impressed that you're trying at all. I, the second that I heard it, because their coach sent us a voice a, recording, of a it, voice yeah. recording of it, and I had to just immediately concede. I can't do that. It's just I, I want to, but <laughs> you probably could. It's it's about doing it in action that that's difficult. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, it's a mouthful. 
If I had to stop every time. Maybe if we had a button, like a, uh, you know, like one of those sound balls. You pre-recorded yourself saying it perfectly and you could just tap the button to... Yeah. Maybe from like a production point of view, we could set that up. That would be sweet. I think we're going to see G2 hit this bomb site a lot in this half. It's the two stand-ins defending B. And I think G2 is going to be more than happy to rinse and repeat on this T side over towards Banana, over towards the B bomb site. And I think eventually, if they continue to have success, you'll start to see MIBR having to lean a third player over, have to be really cognizant of the fact that they're having to retake this bomb site a lot. And that's going to make the A site much easier for G2 as this half goes on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice if you can get into the to a part of the game where the other team actually has to prove they can even hold the bomb side and before you even stop, right? Yeah. So um, so far so good. Also, I don't know, I don't know where they're going to be playing this right now. Wow, that's unfortunate. But some teams I've noticed in the sort of, sort of 2021 version of, of Inferno being played, I've noticed that um, some teams just don't even fight for banana at all in the CT side. Like it seems like a very hard decision that people make that they either really want to go for it and invest a lot into it, or they just leave it alone. And if they're going to leave it alone... This might be something we have to see them bring out later on in the gun rounds. Maybe send a few more people there to alleviate. See, you know, have triple B so you can set it up and you can have someone get aggressive and you can at least take an early fight. You could also do something like having four players run over to the B bomb site, a couple of players dump AG grenades, dump some utility, and then back off to the A bomb site so you leave your two B defenders with extra utility as the round gets later. Yeah. There's a couple different things they could do to kind of mask and and hide perhaps any kind of a weakness. Here they're trying to go for a bait setup. Three USPs outside. I love this. And actually. if this is a slaughter, you're kind of just hoping and praying that G2 is going to kill all three of those and, and just kind of attack the bomb site with wild abandon. Yeah, I mean, that can work, right? If you get a little bit over sellers. Now, the problem is not all of G2 are here, so they would never speed up behind anything now. And Nico's also <laughs> very surgical about this. I don't know how that's a headshot. I feel like that was a little bit further away. I'm gonna it's Nico. Don't worry about it. I'm going to call for a replay on that I one. I think we give, Nico the, we give Nico the extra ones like that. He can do whatever he wants? Yeah. He's got the license to kill? Yep. He's got, and he's going to go for the ace here. He's already seen the stack. So he knows what's coming. Tapping away. It's just a deagle to get that fifth kill. Doesn't realize where the final player is. And I think, I don't think he's going to be able to get it. I don't think you'd ever expect that final player to be back in emo. We've checked a lot of other places. Ooh, we couldn't quite duck down in time. That's a shame. I was say, there are a couple misses. He had a chance to play yeah. whack-a-mole. But now the hunt is on. Yeah, but as, you know, walking into a stack and getting four out of five kills is still pretty good. He handled that beautifully as well. That was, uh, that was like a textbook solo clear against three USPs. Yeah, well done. Ooh, nice flashbang. As he can't see anything at all. He's gonna go... Jax. <laughs> I think it's too late in the day for that one. The extra level of complexity onto the economy system, we don't we don't need it. It would be funny if you made a change now, because there would be like a month or two where people would be running out of spawn with only the 30 bullets in their mag. Yeah, if, if they'd spam through a smoke and then have nothing for the rest of the round. Here we go, pop flashes to take brackets control, and there's no defense mounted here. G2 gonna continue being confident and continue moving forward. Still no resistance yet from MIBR's defense. Good pop flash and peek through the smoke. Well, they actually did the very thing that you said here, Jason, which is they tried to put three people at B early on, and G2 are just exploiting the timing. They get in there before the third man can rotate back into library. <laughs> Team kill on top, and then comes Breno with a kill on Hunter. And weirdly now, it's a two-on-one. And I think G2 actually found a very, very good timing to do all of this, but now they're all dead at that corner. Yeah, I mean, that, that play from Exit coming out of library through the smoke with his teammates pop flash, it only gets him one kill. It's only a one for one, but it slows things down, gives the time for the rotations from the B-bomb site, gives time for the A defenders to kind of set up and get a kill of their own. Yeah. And now Nico's just waiting for one mistake to turn this into a one-on-one. -on -one. But they've got the bomb in the open from library, so no reason for either of these, either of these MIBR players to peek. Maybe especially against Nico, because he's already proven that he's very good at this. Crouching around the corner. He sees it coming in. Instant headshot taking down Breno. Molotov on top to force Knack out. Is he going to go for it? He swings into it. Almost up. Yeah. <laughs> what a joy. I, I just, I love it. I wish we, I wish we, I look forward to the day soon when we can have people back on land to experience sort of the full gravity of it, because it is really a lot of fun. Double HE, again, they're going to try and do that. They do throw them right on top of Nico, and that, that definitely works. And he's alone. Maybe that's a clue for the future for them as well. A lot of pistol. Oh, and another team kill. This time it's Nexa, though. But uh, that's a bit of a problem. 
Aminek comes in for the kill on Yell, and they're gonna get the bomb plant down at the very least here. AK as well picked up on Breno, and then we've got pistols on the rest. Don't know if they can recover any other guns before they actually go for the retake, but don't have a kit either. Molotov on Nexa, he's gonna use it early, not gonna wait, and actually, the Eta Anizen has already passed it. Nice. Nice. Oh, is a flashbang to set it up. Am Aminette gonna go, no, not quite. Sneaking up behind him. A little bit risky, but it's gonna work just fine. Nice little double there. Actually, it's a quad kill on Aminette, and he goes for the ace, and he gets that he killed. I believe so. Was that revenge? Did he just, the next, just took an answer? So maybe it wasn't an accident <laughs> at all, is what I'm saying. Maybe it was on purpose. I am into the conspiracies, <laughs> but I'm just saying that. That's suspicious, you know? Yeah. Nothing like team killing for a bit of unity in the squad. Does lighten the mood, doesn't it? <laughs> They've had two now. But not having huge impacts on the rounds. Hall's pop, here we go. Yell with the AWP has just gotten into some safety. And he finds the first kill coming out. And oh, one more. Jax goes down. And Hunter is left to pick up the pieces. Oh, and is he ever doing it? Three on three. A spectacular turn. That is some high sensitivity play. And he just picked them off so rapidly. Grenade on top of Chaz down here, but the bomb is in pit, so they feel pretty confident in rotating over. Let's see, Breno started to show up at the edge of the smoke. It's a three on three right now. 55 seconds on the clock, so G2 calling for a bit of a freeze, allowing for a mistake potentially for MIBR. But um, this is not a bad setup. He's actually relocated all the way deep into pit by the hay cart here, so it might be hard to find. That's the only piece of utility they have. Looking for the response. Nexa. Oh, he spots an elbow. He didn't react quick enough. They still don't know where the other player is. Hunter's been holding the angle, and he's going to go down. Nico, last one, but... Sort of five on five here. Otherwise, they, they're in trouble. I like that little entry from Hunter, though. That did look cool, but a good recovery. Okay, well, I mean... You know, we talked about them not having maybe some set protocols and plans for Banana, but the nade stacks, the double nades they're busting out are doing some work. It's got them a kill in a previous round. Here it's done great damage onto Jax and decent onto Nico as well. Boosting over. Double Molotov thrown there from the side, so slight waste. You could see an early third player rotating Yell with the AWP over towards the B bomb site just to maybe try and give them a better sense of safety. Allow Knack to switch into the bomb site so you can actually have two players dedicated, or you can set up a pop flash play. That's very interesting. Yeah, he's got it already primed in his hand right now, Breno. He's ready to throw it if anything happens. Crossing the minute mark. Very weak on the A bomb site, but right now that doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. 55 seconds, there's the flash coming in. Famas shows up, but it's a good spray down. Could have been a triple. Almost a bullet away there. Blind shot coming up from Yelly. Couldn't really see anything. A flash bang that's headed up for Breno all the way at the back of the site. And he's alone back here. Just try and stay alive and wait for the teammates to show up. But the Molotov will force him out. Hunter easily getting that kill. And now the bomb is being planted in front. Yell is right there. Oh, he actually did hit that shot on Nexa. I can't believe it. Even if he would have got it, it's not like they would have run out of time. So it's a bold play regardless. Two on three now. They have a kit. I don't think they want to go for this. I don't think they want to completely deplete their economy. I think they want to maybe keep G2 locked in. That nade's going to do good work. Now the retake is on. Now they can move forward. Smoke on the bomb, but they have two players to find. Yeah, they needed that HE. You're absolutely right. Aminet goes down. Hunter, 100% health, but only for a second. He didn't even stop running. That is a nice way to negotiate that two on three. I mean, the, the HE, you're right, that changed it from being a little bit hesitant and then they're just all in. Well, oddly enough, you, you might be sitting there for some point and saying, yells. Anytime Nico's playing well, I just feel like the universe is a little bit more in order, you know? Yeah, it does, something does feel right. You make a, a valid point there. Molotov's uh, across the map, four on the board at the moment. Making sure neither team can be too aggressive. Looks like G2 want to do bracket control again towards top mid and exit eats one of the four flashbangs thrown and he's not going to be able to get away. Another flashbang layered and Aminek gets in front of the Molotov and Yell is feeling real lonely as he goes down. Two on four and this retake surely is not in the cards. Aminek's sense for weakness on that arch corner is just amazing, isn't it? He, he just, he knew 
you threw a smoke, we're going to flash our way through. You try to throw the Molotov, but you're not going to get your rifle out in time. He's just, I mean, he's ready to take the damage to hunt him down. Uh, yeah, and the Molotov came out too late. I yeah. think maybe if that Molotov comes up a second or two ahead of time, ahead of when it actually did, if it was deployed a bit earlier, maybe he doesn't turn that corner. It would take too much damage. The question is if MIB out... You know, what could they do to try and, and change this? Sometimes you, I feel like some of the aggressive apartments plays you can make on the CT side could be really fun for getting some control back. But they're not necessarily easy to, to play off of. But you can actually get, you know, even two or three people up there sometimes. All right. Needs are favoring the T side, at least for the minute here. Yeah, they've gone for the three-man setup over at quad instead. So just giving up on the arch position. Which is maybe fine. Could be hard to clear this out if you're on the G2 side. If they pop flash their way through once again and they... You know, even if they get a kill, you forget that there could be two more people there. Hunter staying... Re everyone's staying real silent in the middle. Yeah, and this is around MIBRs, just saying, please pop flash through that smoke again. Like, yeah. this is, we, we want you to do it. Looks like Hunter might uh, get frisky here towards Halls. Called away, Bomb is going to be joined up with him. Nico's already kind of probing pretty deep into the B bomb site, but you're right, it's still quiet. And this is making MIBR nervous. Third player comes up, so it's all on this lane stack, which is very susceptible to a Halls play. That A bomb site is under a lot of danger, especially with that kill. That's going to pull another player away. Yell out in the open, awkward positioning, awkward fights for him, especially with the FAMAS, and the bomb site's going to fall. Exit might try and hold on to it, but I don't know if it's worth it. Doesn't feel like it. This time the nade's not going to kill anyone. They're going to lose the rifles on top. Yeah, everything about that round was so well done from the G2's point of view. I mean, the fact that you, you're right, even if they hadn't actually slipped out of, of the quad position to try and go there, yep. I still think they would have been in trouble because of the, the three-man setup there coming out of the apps. That was really and tricky. And the, the kill from Nico into the B-bomb sauce, caramel sauce, if that's your jam. Okay. All right. I like it. I wasn't sure. I, I've I, never I had to know. define a Sunday, so I, I don't know how I did there. You just you know it when you see it. Now root beer floats and banana splits. I could I could nail all day long. I don't doubt it for a second. Sprano back here with the Devo right in front. Nice headshot. He's not gonna fall back. He wants more, and he's gonna get it too. Taking down Nico. He could have had that one on Nexa. The follow up is not quite as impressive for Nak, but still. That's, that's smooth. That looked cool. I like him going for that third kill as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, probably feeling it. Heat check. And that could have turned the round. Good frags either way. Three on three, and you've put your teammates in a position to be able to actually win this one. Hunter's going to start creeping up mid. And presence here at both corners. Oh, through the smoke. I don't think Hunter saw it. They're inside of the smoke, and there it is. As Exit makes his exit from the smoke, he goes down, and Yell is the only one remaining. But even if he gets this kill, Bomb is on Nexa. He can just book it to the other bomb site if he wants to, but... Yeah, Yell's making a lot of noise. I don't think he heard that Nexa. Maybe? Maybe. 40 seconds. Nexa's just going to be creeping in. He looks like he's got the, the perfect read for this, honestly. Yell is coming back, though, with a... <laughs> with a vengeance. Yeah, he's he's actually just running all over the place. Normally in 1v1s, you want to really, really try and limit any kind of audio leak like that, because that can absolutely get you killed. Now he's going to be walking out. Smoke is up. Is there a cap? He's not quite sure. He's thinking about Nexus on the other side, and he's going to win that. G2 seems real comfortable with the T side here on Inferno so far. Double AWP now on the CT side. Well, that's the classic, nothing's working. Let's get two ops. Yeah. Throw everything at the top <laughs> now. Oh. All right. Well, Breno's picking up one kill there on Nico. Got to be careful about shuffling those guns around. Hunter not quite checking it. I was getting panicked for a second. I'm fine with that too from Hunter as well. He's just like, Let, let's just check and see how they're doing. Let's let's see if I can find a gap, if I can just kind of sneak in. Maybe with that op, there were three players at B and this will be open. Obviously wrong, but another time he takes that risk, it might work out. Regardless, G2, all three players in banana, they're going to hit this bomb site. If Even if they don't get any kill and kills here, they could actually they get into the site. If they smoke them off and get the bomb plant, three on five like that, could be could be pretty annoying. Molotov, though, slows them down. They're going to try and see if they can just jump right over. Jax takes a fair bit of damage, but they'll catch oh, no. Breno. That is a wild headshot through the smoke. He just only saw a leg escaping in there. And now the bomb is at least going to be planted. 
Oh no, indeed. Three versus four now. They do not have a single nade left on the G2 side, and at least there is something for MIPR to work with. A couple of nades. Exit is going to be blowing up Jax. And that's a nice start to the retake, just like earlier. Four versus two, and this is all set up for them. This should be easy for MIBR. Bit of a crossfire here. Aminek gonna pick up one of them, and oh no! They line up for Nax on the turnaround, it's there, and it's Jelda! Nack falls off the boost. The op baits, he is yeah. up on that boost. He gets one kill on their entrance. Even if he gets traded, he turns that into a four on two, much more manageable situation. Although, fair play, they did lose a four on two right there, so. Yeah, I, I just... A different 4 on 2 than it would have been. Different 4 on 2 and I think also just the... The fact that Jax even gets that kill through the smoke as he's jumping. I saw some small details that could have changed it. But that's heartbreaking for MIBR. They had that round, it felt like... 9 to 3. It happened so quickly. Amanek with the first kill and then the follow-up, you know, just the line-up double kill. Miss Molotov means they're gonna have to hard clear Knack here. Yeah, Ooh, and he knows it as well. Able to get the one kill there, trying to follow it up with the pistol. Excellent eagle. All right, not bad. Three on three at the very least. That's a cool little setup there. They hard clear the tree, and then a pop flash for the second player at the half wall. Again, these deals and light buys from MIBR putting them in a three on three situation in the mid round. And there's another great Deagle shot. Now just two players remain for G2. But does MIPR have any idea where they're going quite yet? A third player just rotated over towards A, but actually G2 is going to head towards the B-bomb site, and they've got the smokes for it. Yeah, unfortunately, they're not... They're not having much luck with these gambles, and I'm not even blaming them for doing it in this round. I don't, I don't know if there are many really great alternatives. But it's certainly costing them a couple of rounds, both here and on Mirage, to try and try and get a bit of an advantage by leaning one or the other side. Bomb goes down, two versus three. And all those kills for G2 happen in Banana. So actually no one from MIBR can even recover the weapons. They just have the one AK-47 from the kill at the A-bomb site. At least they had a smoke they can block off Banana for a while, focus on the rest of it. That's a good kill. Shaz taken down, Amanek leaving Nexo alone, one versus three. Hiding in the back. They do not have a kit picked up. They're going to have to be really quick about this. They do line up for him. And Nexa, he doesn't get the kill. But Yell, 10-second defuse. Plenty of time. Yeah, he's going to have it. That's a bit scary, though. Careful. Yeah, this is the fish are even panicking, Jason. They're not, they can hear that beat. Don't be worried, little fishies. Yeah, they have... I mean, they just haven't built really any momentum, have they? It's just a couple of rounds here or there. They haven't really got anything rolling. Like we talked about with the Brazilian teams and how hype things get. I mean, it's it's nice for them to be able to build that sort of round to round. Like now we're on the winning streak. But if they just keep falling flat after winning one of those rounds, it's just so much harder to sustain. MIBR trying to do the same boost. that got him an opening kill with the AWP a couple of rounds back. And... This time, G2's utility forces him off the angle, but this young man wants to stay aggressive, creeping slowly, opening up wide, and misses the shot. He's got to get away. And they're going to take Nax head instead. Now they know the only thing defending this bomb site is one AWP. He's got the first kill. Nades are going to rain in, and he's pinned down. Can't even get the shot off. And a bomb plant surely for G2, and a huge advantage in the round. 14th round, they can't really buy if they lose these rifles. I mean, it, it, it's not that great to be saving in the 14th round, but I don't know if the alternative is much better. Fair play to uh, to, to Breno, the newcomer as well. He he actually read all of that really well. He got the shot on the uh, shot of the guy jumping up on the box. He was ready for the close play. He just couldn't really fire the gun. It's, it's that shot on the jacks that he missed that he, that he really, really needed. True. Take that player out, fall away, get a new angle, and then you can maybe set up a defense and... Unfortunately, Knack peeks to try and give him the time and spacing to get away, and he pays for it. Yell gonna try and get some exits, but is not gonna stick around for anything after that missed shot. G2 would love to take this off away. They've got plenty of money. Many things. I kind of almost understand why they wanted to put them both in B. Because if you make one of the plant stand-ins play archway, where you have to rotate and make all those decisions, that's also really tough. I'm just kind of surprised we haven't seen a whole lot of, like, three or four players coming over. It kind of talks about the start of this half. Like, having an extra player come over that just gives those two inexperienced defenders of that bomb site a little bit of extra utility for the late round. Anything yeah. to make their lives a bit easier. Oh. Okay, they're going to be rotating... Everyone. Everyone. Oh, they're, are they swapping them out? 
They're rotating. They're doing that thing in chess where you move the king in the tower or the castle around. Out of, okay. Out of yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. Move the, uh, the king to the corner, the rook, you know, sticks out a little bit. That's, I wanted to mention chess because I thought it might make me sound smart, but then I realized if I don't know the terms, it kind of does the opposite. It does defeat the purpose. Damn. Nice try, though. <laughs> Thanks. Well, here we go. Mid control, and I think uh, this might be the first time we've seen G2 attack brackets in a gun round where there's actually going to be defense mounted. One for one trade. The rest of the defense is actually going to get aggressive and lane. Good shot with the AWP. He can now peek out way wider and find a double kill. It's all on Jax. 19 health as well. Just completely stuck in here. Finally, something working out for MIBR. It's been a very, very tough first half here on Inferno, without a doubt. Yell. <laughs> Caught him. He was, he was angling for that shot. Jax is realizing there's really no options here. He's going to be... Didn't it feel, really felt like they got that figured out well enough to put up a real fight and stop the attack from G2. But switching sides, maybe they can have an easier time of things. They did do um, some decent damage on their T side of Mirage. It'll be interesting to see what they have planned, what they have in store for us here. A boiler setup from G2. Silent jump. Oh, not so silent. There's been a lot of struggles with the boosts, with the jumps, with the... Uh, yeah. With everything involving no, no. movement. So something's up. Something is going on. This is going to be really hard. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, that is so lightning fast. He, I actually thought he was definitely going to die in that moment. And somehow he just... He just destroyed them. You can't... You can't even blame Jax. That was such a quick first shot. Still, a two-player setup in mid. They can, uh, G2, with a couple nice shots of their own from these USPs, they can find it, but coming out of halls, Amanek, this is a tough place. He wants the second guy, but he knows the timing, and now it's all on Amanek, and he's only good for one. And Nico was playing alone over in B with a Molotov to slow them down, so that the, the other four people could have got there, but since they never really show up, it sort of doesn't really matter. Get him. <laughs> so close. But no, exit is going to be running away, and they have... Just everything they need to win this round, basically. As long as they can they avoid could, fighting Nico, it's going to be fine. They could take their hands off the keyboard and mouse and win this round. True. Sometimes people should do that, <laughs> and they don't do it, and then they lose it. Well, actually, Shaz is running all the way behind him to shoot him in the back, which is kind of a cool idea. Maybe knife him if you're feeling really bold. Oh, Nico not hitting the shot. Either of these maps. Deagles and a scout. Yeah, you're right. It's been really tough to hold on to, to, to that momentum, so I don't know what it is. Maybe it's got something to do with the jumping. Everyone's just feeling a bit weird today. Can't win the second round. Can't do any boosts. Although, saying that, Amanek is boosted up here, so maybe... Yeah, but we weren't on their perspective. I bet they struggled to get that going. Two, three or four times. <laughs> Double nades, a little bit of chip damage on a Nico, but nothing to get too excited about. So I'm is happy with some early banana presence and going to back away now towards middle. And they haven't taken like any random deagle shots, haven't like taken a random attack from the stout that was boosted up. So sitting in an okay position for the moment. It looks to me like they're going to be going for the A-bomb side, but I just want to point out that Nexa has a smoke if they come back to banana. That's always fun to... And to Nico's now rotated A. Yeah. So they're all here and ready. 48 seconds, and they're going to be shot at a little bit by Hunter. He's going to be careful in the corner. They do have a Molotov. If they want to get really, really uh, hard about it, they could try and, try and clear him out that way. Nico actually flashed and still getting a kill. A little bit uncomfortable here. Another one coming in for Hunter. Another one dig shot is Jax to follow it up. And Yell is on his own. One versus four, so... They got, they got way too distracted by that cubby presence. Yeah. They, they were way too slowed down by that. They'd already thrown their utility for the for the execute. And look at where all the deaths happen. Obviously, the first kill is at the entrance into the bomb site, but the next three are all in that really tight choke point at lane by the hay cart. Like, they, they yeah. could never get out of the trap. That is so rough. I, they just, they can't. They just cannot win that second round. Upsetting. Some some kind of weaponry here in this round for MIBR, but it's not really that great, is it? Some kind of... Some some, kind. This is some kind of buy. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. I don't know what. Yeah, two smokes, two flashbangs. Which doesn't really give you the opportunity to be aggressive or kind of take any battles early on against the utility of G2, because you, you'll never win the utility trade game.
Yeah, I'm not really sure what the what the plan. I was gonna say what the plan is going to be, and already Nexus. Uh, taking one down through the smoke, so it gets even a bit more grim. And now they're going to push deep onto Bananas. So they can have a fast flank if this A hit is committed. Yeah. And if MIBR wants to come back to Banana, it's going to be a tough fight. Because I think if you're if you're MIBR in this situation, you're almost like, yeah, we have two smokes and two flashes. All we can really do is hit that B bomb site. So at the moment, they're kind of probing towards A to see if they can get a cheeky one dig, see if they can catch someone snoozing, uh, and that's not happening. Having a, not much luck in terms of getting just that slightly favorable opening. Don't get to see people these days too often push down bottom of banana. Now, it could just be the, the economy that makes them more likely to do that. But I feel like that's gone away from, from, from modern common war now, which is good. Well, I'm, I'm actually more interested to see them against, obviously, the, the NIPs and the, and the bigs in this group. Because, I yes. mean, we are seeing some some difficulty. They did drop a, you know, what, uh, Mirage, I think they dropped, like, a 5-on-2 or 4-on-2. I think they've dropped one here on Mirage as well, or, I mean, on Inferno as well. So you're, you've seen, like, we've seen a couple cracks. I just don't think MIBR have have the ability to fully kind of press on that weakness and, and cause a, a collapse. I think Big and NIP can do that much more effectively. Oh, definitely. Maybe it's also a nice thing for, uh, for a creature to have this as a warm-up game in that case, you know, yeah. just kind of... Get a little bit more ready for it. Nico with a nice double. Next will followed up with one of his own. And yeah, they can guess he's probably around here. And especially because they're putting pushing middle behind him. So with the Glock in hand, there's not gonna be anything like a good ending here for uh, for Shot Shin the whole round. And we'll see what MIBR is in store, but they've got to get something, some kind of life going after losing that second round. Hunter with the Fomus out in the open, and they want nothing to do with that battle. They said screw it, obviously realizing there could be an AWP, something behind it as well, but Hunter was really exposed. Yeah, in the middle with an, uh, you know, maybe not the, the the most powerful weaponry there. Did look tricky, but fair play. If they peeked into the AWP, that could have ended badly. I'm surprised to see them give it up, but it's just a conservative decision, right? They're, they're, yeah. they're more than content to make sure that G2 couldn't have success with any kind of an aggressive play. And they're more than happy to play the five on five from this point. And now using that AWP on Amanek to try and just stay alone at B while four people are at the A bomb site trying to get out. And that is going to be dropped by Nico. They're pushing around Arch. I don't know if they can get into CT spawn. They can turn it into a bit of a B split, but they have to realize they have to see that opportunity before they can get it. Nico goes down. Spotted a couple of people, maybe all three there. So that's some great information. And they've also taken down the, the second B defender. If they want to execute some kind of a split, they have all the information they need to realize it'd be weaker, but they're going to continue trying to force their way into A, and the SMG is doing some work. Hunter's still alive, and he's got one lined up right in front of him, never turned his head, and Hunter's able to get a bit of extra damage. A one-on-one -on -one for Amanek with the AWP. Showing up. Doesn't have any more nades, otherwise maybe he could kill Yell outright. He's very tagged up. I don't know if Hunter realized or not. I could call it out to his teammate. Yell being slightly paranoid about where exactly Amanek is coming from. He's just waiting. He's expecting for someone to show up from uh, maybe the other angle. Oh, he turns around at the wrong time. Unbelievable. <laughs> He'd held that angle for so long. Oh, it's going to be so sad watching it back. It's a classic CSGO moment. That's brutal. AVP like situated at the B bomb site with banana control to be able to cheat a fourth player over to A. We saw G2 just kind of pull that off, and that's yeah. what allowed Nico to be there for the A hit. Are we going to see a full-on banana type aggression coming out here from MIBR? It would be kind of cool to see if they could maybe put a little bit of speed behind some of this. Although the Molotov is burning them alive out on Banana. That is... That's not how you want to start that kind of play. It looked like they were set up to just explode through the smoke. And now grenades are raining in. More Molotovs and HEs on top of them. Got to be careful. You see, Nak is now taking all of the damage and he's going to be dropped. So aggressive here, G2. On banana. Well, that's just great work from Nexa and Nico with their utility. That's that's two easy kills. Obviously, they didn't even see the first one. Molotov nade combo allows them to burn, and Knack is forced out by nades and Molotovs towards tree. Even a flashbang drops in front of car, and it's an easy fight for Nico. And they just back away. Perfect, picture perfect for G2. Nico now boosted up. Nexa inside of the bomb site, and MIBR spent so many resources getting to this point, and this is really all they have that they can do in a three v five. Yeah, one chance basically to try and break this. They knew need a clean entry. 
And with uh, a bit of a crossfire, it's not necessarily that easy either. 20 seconds on the clock. Nico set up on the one side. A little bit of team damage, I believe, on that one, but it doesn't matter. Nexa is there, and they're going to be able to shut this all the way down. Chance will get dropped. No, I don't want to butcher it. I'm trying to... But his actual real name is apparently Bruno, so I'm... He's got a... He should have should have led with that. That should just be his alias. It's, it's fantastic. The rhyming, the cadence, it's all there. It works real well. Eight more rounds for G2 to, uh, to close it out. Yeah, or potentially a really ridiculous comeback <laughs> into overtime. That's or eight more rounds to entirely collapse. Yeah. No one's hoping for that, really. <laughs> but uh, maybe some of the MRDR fans, potentially. 23rd round here. Org has been stolen on to exit. This is... It's just very hard to... Like, the, the, the kind of the doubts or the little bit of worry that we had at the start of Mirage, it's such a distant memory now compared to the duty that we're watching here on Inferno. They look absolutely comfortable in everything they're doing right now. Three-man setup, even with actually a quad setup now. Nico's joining at Arch. They're so happy to do this. It's going to be Amanek to open it up. Jax with the follow-up. A little bit of a return here. Nico, though, trying to clean it up in the middle. And a big double kill. It is exit now. One versus three. He's got some time. Theoretically, if he could find Nexer and get the bomb down and play the one versus two. But it's all just, you know, just a, a long road ahead. And a lot of what if maybe he could do this. It's all going to have to line up perfectly for him. I think Nexa is also playing in such a smart position where even when he gets contact, he can survive because Nico's halfway to the B-bomb site. So if Nexa can just live, Nico can turn around. There's the Molotov to make sure Exit can't close the gap on him, at least from the left side. Let's Nexa.